Hey, what's up, guys? Brad Daly is here, coming to you from Wonderless Live here in Hollywood. We're going to be chatting today with our special guest. We're very excited to be joined by Jessica Rodder. Jessica, how are you? Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you. It's good to be here with you. <laughs> Absolutely. Likewise, um, I know you're very busy. You have a lot going on. It's an exciting time for you. I think that's probably the best way to sum it up. Um, what's what's work been like for you these days? And um, kind of tell us about uh, you know where things are at with your career. And for people who aren't too familiar with you and your music, can you kind of give our viewers and listeners kind of you know a brief synopsis of what you do and what you're all about? Sure. So I just released my first album. It's called Planes, and it's been pretty well received. I've been playing some concerts in L.A., and I'm going to tour the East Coast. And I just got a song in a TV show called Guilt that will be airing next week. I don't know when this will be airing, but, um, yeah, so a lot of stuff in TV shows. I'm working on a short film for my album also. It's a dance film, very beautiful, and already writing my next album, and... You know. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Absolutely. Building, always trying to improve, I'm sure. Let's talk about uh, Hit the Ground, the song that's going to be on uh, Freeform's new drama, Guilt, mm -hmm. uh, coming up on Monday, July 25th. Uh, talk, to, talk to us about the process of getting a song on a network, what that uh, entails. It's not something that happens overnight, I'm sure. Yeah. Uh, if you can kind of take us into that experience um, for people who aren't too familiar with how it works. Um, what is it like from start to finish? Well, there are a lot of different people who can pitch your song. So I'm with a couple different companies who pitch my songs for different music supervisors. But strangely, this one actually kind of was one of those fluke situations where I got an email that the editor of the show had the song and liked it and put it in the show. So really, it was just someone found the song and put it in the TV show. And, uh, I mean for that one yeah no doubt I mean a right place at the right time I'm sure um, writing the song itself um, that experience writing music uh, do you enjoy that as much as actually going out there and performing live uh, because I've spoken with artists in the past and it differs you know some people they like obviously live and uh, over writing the music some people that's their favorite part is writing the music behind the scenes when no one's really watching what's going on what do you prefer uh, it depends on what mood I'm in. I, I love them both. I think songwriting is essential for my health and well-being as a person. I am constantly writing songs, but I definitely am a performer and love being on stage and love the audience-performer relationship. So really both. I don't think I could choose one or the other. Now, we, you and I were talking off the air about uh, you're originally from L.A., grew up here. Uh, what is it like to grow up in a place where, obviously, it's the entertainment capital of the world, you're going out, you're performing at different venues. Uh, is it extra special to grow up and, you know, work your way up to music and getting uh, material out there in a place where you grew up originally? Um, yeah, I mean, it's kind of all I've known. My family's very musical. I've been singing since I was four, so it's like I've built this long career here, and the songwriting is kind of the new aspect of it. So I don't think it would, I mean, it just makes sense for it to be happening here because this is where I am, um, though I certainly love other parts of the world and the country. So who knows where I'll end up, but L.A. for now. So your family, you said you come from a musical family, uh, parents, uh, siblings, uh, family members, extended family, what, uh, what are their musical uh, abilities? Uh, I assume maybe that you have some um, inspiration that was drawn from then? Yeah, definitely. Well, growing up in the family, of course, helped inspire me. Um, my grandpa wrote songs for Frank Sinatra and Dean Martin and was a multi-instrumentalist. He played saxophone and flute and clarinet and piano. And my mom is a professional flute player. She plays for movies. And my dad is a composer and a music contractor and puts orchestras together for movies. So it's been, you know, the crew. <laughs> the crew plays Do you bounce ideas off of them when you're creating, brainstorming? Yeah, my, I definitely send tracks to my dad all the time just because I think when you're around amazingly composed orchestral music all the time, you have a very, very keen ear and a very serious attention to detail. And so I enjoy his perfectionism. Is that a word? Perfection. Perfectionism. If not, we just made it a word, right? Perfection. Yeah. We'll go with it. <laughs> 
Um, yeah, you know, talking about just getting back to the event here tonight at the Wonderlust um, live. First time you've been here. Yeah. First time I've been here. Uh, playing at different venues like this where it's, uh, you know, it's a place where uh, people come out, they have a good time. It's not an overly packed house, um, but it, it's filled with fans who are very passionate about music in general. Uh, take us through your experience with fans getting to interact uh, with different people as you've grown as an artist here. Obviously, you're still climbing the ranks. Uh, but just talk about your experience with fans and what fans mean to you as an artist. Okay. Um, yeah, so like you said, I'm still I'm still growing, but um, it's been really interesting watching people I've never met before reach out to me and come up to me after shows and explain to me what songs have made them feel or think. And that kind of has both... It, it can be very tiring being an independent musician just because you're an artist so like most of it is creative but then you have to do this hustle which I'm like so not that person so you are kind of like what's the point all the time and then you'll get an email or something from a fan who's like I'm really interested in this song or I love this song or like this helps me get through the day and then you're like oh this is why it matters because music yes matters so that's my experience with fans is that it reminds me that there's always a deeper purpose in everything we're doing being a solo artist, let's talk about that for a moment. Uh, the dedication, um, I think, having the ability to, obviously, um, uh, it's a demanding schedule, and you have to make sure you know, you're know you on top of things. Um, you have to be kind of a self-starter. Mm -hmm. uh, is that something that comes easily to you naturally? Is it something you have to work at? What's that been like for you? Um, I think I would have said that I'm not a self-starter like two, three years ago. And then recently I've been like, oh, no, I am because <laughs> I'm making things happen. And and so that's that's been a good realization, kind of bolstered my confidence a little bit. Just yeah. But um, it's definitely it. It is a psychological balancing act all the time. But you got to keep moving, you know. <laughs> no question. You have to keep moving and you have to keep uh, churning out new music. Uh, uh, people, as you, as of course, you know, you climb through the ranks, expectations rise. People, you put out great music. That's the thing today. There's so many great artists. There's so many great artists who are also on the rise, just like yourself. And um, the fans are there. From what I've, in my observation, um, the fans are there regardless of what um, rank you're at. If the talent is there, mm -hmm. People will come, and um, you know, obviously, the expectations go up. How do you kind of handle um, expectations? With uh, again, you're just kind of climbing the ranks, but um, when you put out good, good music, people obviously like it, and they expect more of it. Uh, is there pressure sometimes with that to continue to put out uh, other songs that are just as good? What's that been like for you? Yeah, I mean, I think it's a pressure the same way like a fashion line has to release a new line every season artists need to keep creating um and sometimes it's not you know sometimes you don't feel authentically like you need to have a songwriting session but i really do think that it is essential um my sorry the main thing i wanted to say was that i have there's a lot of pressure to like stick with your brand and like figure out your brand and do all of that and that's something i honestly am still like figuring out and then i realized okay because people come up to me and be like oh you're just like Adele like without the drama and I'm like but am I because I don't I'm like I'm not <laughs> like musically we're not the same the comparisons um, are starting already it's, just, it's funny because there's always there's always a disconnect and but people just love finding ways to compare you to things and then I realize like the music that is authentically coming out of me is what's hitting people the most and the songs that I get emails about are the songs that I really didn't try to put anything on for like they're really just the authentic songs that came out of my soul so I think that that kind of takes the pressure off because you realize like you can just be yourself and perform and write the songs that are coming out of you and people will listen and some people won't and that's okay because it's art <laughs> like art should be absolutely divided. You can express it however you choose. And uh, traveling, uh, let's talk about that for a moment. Uh, do you like to travel and perform? Is it something that uh, you, because again, different artists, it varies across the board. Um, but I think the artists who really like interacting with fans, they enjoy traveling. Yeah, I love going to a new city. I feel like you feel so much more limitless when you're in a new, a new city and like the people you meet are new and everything's new and fun and exciting. Um, but that being said, I have not been on like a 200 date tour yet so could my opinion could change in the future but as of now I think it's so fun and would love to do it all the time. 
<laughs> Looking ahead on your tour schedule, what's coming up for people who live don't live in the L.A. area? Uh, I know in September, I believe September 11th, you're going to be in New York. I saw that on the uh, schedule. Probably will be uh, a, a bit of a bittersweet concert, I would imagine. Definitely. What is your upcoming schedule like beyond that? Still working on it, but um, I'll be playing a couple secret shows that I'm like not allowed to post in New York and in D.C. And then um, there will probably be one in Baltimore, Philadelphia, Boston. Um, but yeah, all surrounding those, that week of September. We're definitely looking forward to it. And your website to go to for people who want to learn more about your music and to keep up with you and to look for those tour dates coming up. It's jessicarotter.com and everything is there. Literally anything you could need. <laughs> Perfect. I love it. Um, and also, uh, as far as uh, looking ahead down the line, um, what are some of your big goals in the industry? Uh, again, uh, we're in the summer right now of 2016. Uh, you're on tour. You have different things coming up. But uh, in the near future, in the next couple of months or so down the line, next year or two, what are some of your goals that you have for yourself uh, that you'd like to see come to fruition? Well, um, this short film we're working on is coming together and it's going I think it's going to be very powerful. We're hoping it'll end up in a couple festivals and um my next album we're working on that. It's a little bit more has more of a rock influence, a little bit more upbeat, which I think I'm really excited about. And uh yeah, just I don't know, sticking with my stuff and I think getting more stuff more places. Also like getting a manager and the basic things that I need essentials. To do, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it, it will come a time. Yeah, exactly. Tonight specifically here at the Wonderless Live, um, what do you have planned? What are you going to be singing for fans? Um, what's kind of on the docket on the schedule for tonight? Uh, we'll just be performing a few songs. This is a charity concert, so we're supporting a charity called Door of Hope, which helps homeless families in Los Angeles. Um, someone just reached out to me and asked me if I'd perform, and I'm always willing to perform for charity things. Um, so we're doing a few songs, and I'm doing a cover of a Peter Gabriel song, because I just saw him at the Hollywood Bowl, and he is an absolute angel. So, awesome. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. And uh, for t tonight specifically, and um, going forward, uh, you know, charities, talking about charities, how important is it, in your opinion, for musical artists, depending on, doesn't matter what level they're at, if they're well-established or just beginning like yourself, how important is it to kind of give back to your community and um, to help out as best you can? I mean, I think it's important regardless of whether or not you're an artist. I think that the world only becomes better if we help it become better. And I think, you know, positive thought can only go so far. Sometimes you have to actually act on your desires to make the world a better place. Um, but yeah, we all have different skills. I used to be want to be the one who like goes into the jungle and kicks down doors and like stops human trafficking. And then I realized, okay, I have other skills that I could use to help raise awareness or get those people who do have those skills of kicking down doors and stopping stuff out there. So I am passionate about issues and I'm trying to like use my actual skills in the best, most effective ways in my charitable desires. <laughs> What's one thing about the music industry as it stands right now that you would maybe like to see changed at some point? One thing, if there's, there could be many different things, but in your opinion, what's one thing that Jessica Rotter would like to see changed? In the music industry? Yes. Um, I know I put you on the spot a little bit. I, I mean, it's, it's hard. Like, so much has changed in the past 20 years that uh, I, I honestly don't think I have a vision for how it could be changed. I think that, uh, I, I, I think that, the opinions, my opinion would change if I was in a different city. I think that people in Los Angeles have a different opinion of art than people in, say, London. I kind of romanticize London. Um, I feel like people kind of look down upon artists that are starting out almost as like a wannabe and not as like a true creator. And I think I would like that to change. I would like it that people accept that art is art at any level because creating is important and powerful whether or not you're famous and fame and creativity is separate <laughs> that's what i would like i would like that mindset to shift a bit gotcha absolutely i would agree jessica rotter be sure to check out her music on freeform's new drama guilt coming up on monday july 25th and uh, the website once again jessica there we go hit her up and social media twitter yeah. 
Facebook? Facebook slash Jessica Rotter, Twitter slash Jessica Rotter, Instagram slash J Bohem. Yeah. Good deal. Check her out. <laughs> Jessica, thanks so much for joining us here on the Beat Pod Show. Absolutely. Best of luck to you as the rest of the summer goes along and throughout the rest of your career as well. We really appreciate your time. Thanks for coming.